Hey everyone, welcome to Greybeard's Jewels. Today, we bring you 10 fun facts about Maryland. Number 10. In 1840, doctors Horace Hayden and Chapin Harris founded the Baltimore College of Dental Surgery, the first such college in the world. Here, students were formally trained with a scientific, medical approach to dentistry and could obtain a Doctor of Dental Surgery degree, giving them the familiar post-nominal initials DDS we know today. Seeing the value this approach brought to dentistry as a profession at a time when many dentists were either untrained or charlatans and quacks, more dental schools were opened throughout the country, modeling their curriculum after this pioneer in modern dental history. Number 9. Along the West Virginia-Maryland border, Hoy Crest on Backbone Mountain is the highest point in Maryland at 3,360 feet. From the peak, you have a great view of both states. The lowest point in Maryland is a depression in the Chesapeake Bay called Bloody Point Hole, which is 174 foot below sea level and situated about a mile offshore from Bloody Point on Kent Island. Legend holds the name came about from either a bloody massacre of Native Americans or a pirate who was executed for his crimes and his body was hung out as a deterrent for others. Either way, pretty gruesome. Number 8. In 1962, Maryland was the first state to declare an official sport, and that sport was jousting. While holding on to much of the medieval tradition, this version is a non-contact sport where competitors must try to spear small rings of decreasing size as they race down an 80-yard track at high speed through three arches. Cecil Calvert, the state's first governor, and his son brought the sport over from the old country, and they've held tournaments since colonial times, and the sport gained a lot of popularity after the Civil War. There is a state championship held annually since 1950. Number 7. Maryland famous faces include comedian Louis Black, aka the King of the Rant, who grew up in Silver Spring and gained nationwide fame with his weekly segment, Back in Black, on The Daily Show, where he rants about the absurdity of current events. Thurgood Marshall, the first African-American Justice of the Supreme Court, was born in Baltimore. Prior to his appointment, he won 29 of the 32 cases he presented to the Supreme Court as an attorney. Michael Phelps, who has won 23 Olympic gold medals in swimming and is an advocate for mental health, was born in Baltimore and raised in Rogers Forge. Number 6. The Sultan of Swat, George Ruth Jr., better known as Babe Ruth, was born in Baltimore in 1895. His passion for baseball blossomed at St. Mary's Industrial School for Boys, where Brother Matthias tirelessly helped him to refine his skills. He had so much talent that in 1914, Jack Dunn, the owner of the Orioles, was invited to watch him play and offered him a contract in under an hour. The other players on the team initially referred to him as Jack's newest babe, and the most famous nickname in baseball was born. Number 5. The Ravens are named for the Edgar Allan Poe classic poem, The Raven, and their mascot is appropriately named Poe. This to honor the fact Poe was a resident of Baltimore. Since their inception into the league, they have won the Super Bowl twice. The name also fits in nicely with their professional baseball team, the Orioles, keeping with the bird theme. The name was chosen in a fan contest. There was another Baltimore team named the Ravens as well, a wheelchair basketball team, who are now known as the Maryland Ravens Incorporated. Number 4. The Ouija board as we know it today, with a planchette and alphabetic board, was invented by Baltimore resident Elijah Bond in 1890. Although he didn't invent the concept of using tools to communicate with the dead, he did patent it and introduce it commercially at a time spiritualism was very popular in the U.S. 
He even used the design of the board on his tombstone upon his death. So is it a toy or a true means of communicating with the deceased? It all depends on your viewpoint. Number 3. Edgar Allan Poe, the original master of darkness and macabre, lived in Baltimore for a time. Much of the reputation attributed to him as a drug-addicted, alcoholic madman was completely fabricated by a vengeful foe who wrote a fictitious obituary and slanderous biography. Friends and family adamantly denied the derogatory claims, but such was the nature of his writing and the mysterious circumstances of his death that the false depiction stuck. After disappearing for days, he was found semi-conscious and ragged-looking and taken to a hospital where he died days later. No autopsy was performed and the cause remains a mystery. Some blame drugs and alcohol, while others suggest epilepsy, rabies, or even murder. Number 2. On September 14, 1814, America's National Anthem was written by Maryland lawyer Francis Scott Key. Key had boarded a British ship to negotiate the release of prisoners, but they were not allowed to leave the ship until after the bombardment of Fort McHenry. As he watched the horrible events unfold, he was so relieved to see the flag still stood the next morning that he was inspired to write a poem, The Defense of Fort McHenry. The poem was printed in newspapers, then it was set to a tune and dubbed the Star-Spangled Banner, and officially became the national anthem on March 3, 1931. Number 1. Harriet Tubman might have been born into slavery in Dorchester County, but she managed to overcome the abuse and many obstacles in her way to escape to freedom. Soon she became a conductor on the Underground Railroad a network of hideaways and abolitionists that helped slaves find freedom. She made over a dozen treks back into slave territory and managed to lead each of the 70 or so people she took under her wing to freedom. When the Civil War broke out, she joined the Union as a nurse, then later as an armed scout and spy. When she passed away in 1913, she was buried with military honors. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Greybeard's Jewels. And don't forget the podcast. Bye!